Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story Entitled Father Gets His Butt Kicked by a Former Marine So not personally happening to me, but I witnessed it firsthand. I was 8 or 9, 13 now and have really a bad memory. And me and my mother were walking through either Walmart or Target. Again, a horrid memory. We're walking through one of the frozen aisles and there is a man. Roughly in his late 40s, freezer door open, taking out what seems to be the last box of Walmart slash Target brand of waffles. Cue the entitled father and his four-year-old child. The entitled father comes walking down the aisle and I assume the awesome veteran is walking out. Suddenly, this face of utter horror is on the entitled father's face. As he looks in the freezer where the waffles were, looks down the aisle and sees the awesome veteran and box in hand. Something along these lines were shared. The entitled father yells, Hey, you old guy! The awesome veteran turns around, Me? Yeah, you! Give me those waffles! The veteran, astounded, says, Oh, no. Oh, really? Why not? Because I was in the aisle first, and got them first? Well, my kid needs them. I sincerely doubt that. Doubt what? That he needs them. Yeah, I need them. Me, being the smarty pants American first grader I am, butted in. I say, well, the veteran got them first, so finders keepers. Losers suck. The awesome veteran says, kids got a point. At this point, the couple opposite of the aisle, me and my mother were staring at the two men arguing. At this point, the entitled father is pissed. The awesome veteran is as cool as a cucumber. If you don't give me those waffles, you will regret it. The veteran confused as to why this man is picking a fight over waffles. He asks him, and why is that exactly? The entitled father then proceeded to whip out a switchblade with a blade well exceeding the legal limit in the state of red, white, and blue. This is why! The entitled father then charges at the awesome veteran. In one plur of motion, this man is disarmed, and the awesome veteran is suddenly the biggest threat, with a 5-inch blade in his hand. In another plur of motion, the entitled father, which I will mention in a 300-pound, Buff Redneck is now pinned to the ground, with this 200 plus pound veteran on top of him. Then the awesome veteran says something along the lines of, Be careful who you pick fights with, because you don't know if they are a lowly college student or a seasoned combat marine. He then asks someone to call the police and someone else to get the store manager. I never ran faster in my life to get a cashier. Long story short, the entitled father got arrested for non-aggravated assault and disturbing the peace. The entitled kid is now fatherless, still is, and that man is still in prison for about six years more. Next story. Karen Tangles with a combat veteran gets more than a handful. I'm a 52-year-old man that works as a butcher at a pork processing plant and I never encountered Karen in my hometown. Background I live in a town of about 20,000 people in southeast Iowa. I've lived here my entire life, minus six years that I spent in the military, and serving in Operation Desert Storm. Yeah, it's been 25 years. I was discharged in 1996, but it serves a relevant point, that people always tend to miss with the ones they know nothing about. The story. The other day, I was at a neighborhood grocery, and we will call it HV, to keep anonymity. I was buying a couple loaves of bread as I had run out. Now at HV, their work uniform is red polo shirt, with a company name embroidered on the left breast area in white, khaki, or black pants. 
A different colored aprons, black for the deli slash meat counter, red for floor and front area, green for floral and white lab coat for the pharmacy. I couldn't have been in the aisle for 10 seconds when I felt a pair of eyes on my shoulder. I turned with a start causing the woman directly behind me to give me a frown. I will call her Karen. I tell her, you know, you shouldn't stand behind people like that. You don't know how they will react. I need your help. Stupid me didn't register the way she said that, which should have set off the alarm bells. Now there are people out there that state their anger is on a short fuse. I don't have a fuse. I have a button. Push it and it's Armageddon. One thing I do have to admit though, I've been pretty good at keeping it suppressed. I'm usually very level-headed, I mean not had enough violence in my life, I would give anything if I could just live in peace. I tell her, if you want help, you should ask one of the employees. I am. Huh? The realization suddenly hits me like a tank. And then she's talking to me. Ma'am, I don't work here. I was wearing a black t-shirt, black cargo pants, black socks, and black sneakers. There was nothing about how I was dressed that said I work here. However, Karen must have been blind as well as deaf. Don't lie to me. You work here. By this time, I can feel myself starting to lose control. This insufferable oaf was wearing my patient's sin. What about my clothes says I work here? You're wearing an employee uniform. You need to help me. Now. Oh, bad move, Karen. Now I'm about 6 foot 1, weigh about 210 pounds. I'm not a small guy. And my voice is fairly deep. Meaning, when my volume goes up, I can get very intimidating. So much so, I've made more than a few scared of me. And at this point, manners have gone out of the window. I'd had enough. Me matching shrill scream with booming growl. What part of I don't work here do you not understand, you irritating pencil neck? After Karen loses a surprised look on her face, she pulls up her fists. And she gets this I'm going to kick your butt look. I see this and at the same time, I notice a couple of employees behind me so I returned her look with a go ahead and try it look. I tell her, fair warning, you swing on me like a man, you better be prepared to take a bunch like a man. Well, Karen relaxes her hands. Then she hauls off and slaps me across my face, knocking my glasses off and scrabbing the bridge on my nose. It did bleed a bit, but the kicker was she was laughing. Apparently, Karen must have thought I wouldn't do anything. However, she got tangled with the wrong guy. She turned to look at me and I put her on her butt with a slab across her face. I tell her, I warned you. Karen decides to play her trump card. I'm going to have you arrested. I smiled wildly and pointed to the security cameras installed in the ceiling to each end of the aisle. I tell her, have a nice day, witch. I grabbed my two loaves of bread and walked up front to bay while Karen was frog marched to the cop car after the cops cuffed her up and made the arrest. I found the next day the grocery store decided to suspend her from the establishment for 30 days. Sucks to be her. Next story. Entitled woman tells us the food was horrible after she ate it all. I was recalling some crazy stories about my time as a waitress when I was working at Saltgrass Steakhouse and thought I'd share. Maybe share some more stories about the choosing beggars you will always encounter in the restaurant business, but I like this one particularly for how my awesome boss handled it all. This was a few years ago and I have been at this particular restaurant for a little over a year at this point. I never had a wrong order and knew the menu like the back of my hand and I really loved working there, since it was more pricey than some places, so we tended to attract better tippers. It was close to the end of my shift as a couple walked in. My replacement wasn't there yet, so I thought, why not? One last table for the day. I greeted them politely and they ordered some smothered cheese fries and some soda and later got some double pork chops 
and chicken fried steak. I remember because it was just a good day. I checked on them periodically, making sure their drinks were always full or if they needed anything else made sure their food was okay to which they replied that it was great. I noticed that they had cleaned their plates, not one single thing left on them. And as I was taking them away, I asked if they wanted some dessert and they said no. So I proceeded to drop off their check and all of a sudden their attitude went sour at this point. I want to see your manager. Um, okay. But can I ask what the problem is? I might be able to help. Usually I could help if there was any problem although I couldn't think of what it was. This was the worst food I have ever eaten. I'm not paying for this. I want it for free. She was actually pretty loud and I was grateful the restaurant wasn't busy because I hated it when customers made a scene and disturbed the other diners. Okay, I will get the manager then. I purposely walk by the podium and tell the hostess to not let these people D&D, which in our store meant dine and dash. Just funny restaurant language for us. Thankfully, my manager got out of her office in a flash knowing leave-in while they weren't being watched was probably what they were waiting for and sure enough, our great host was blocking them from leaving at that exact moment. Excuse me folks, but you haven't paid your bill. You need to pay before leaving. The manager said go into the doors as well. She had stopped people from just walking out on the check many times before, so this was nothing new to her at all. But the food was horrible. You expect us to pay for horrible food and service? She looked at me when she said that. Obviously lying, but there was no point in defending myself. My manager knew I was good at my job and she has heard it all before. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. If I may ask though, if it was so horrible, why did you eat it all? Once you finish your meal, there is nothing I can do to fix it. And even if it was horrible, we have no comp policy. So regardless, you will be paying your bill. Comping a meal is what we do to give it for free. Manager said sternly. Our food was expensive and they had spent a little under $100 so there was no way she was letting them walk out on us. You can't make us pay for bad food. And we are in a hurry which is why we ate it all because we didn't have time for you to make it better. The food here is always terrible anyway. She said making a motion to leave but my manager didn't even flinch. Which seemed to surprise a woman. As if people just magically moved out of her way all the time. Ma'am I can call the police and have you arrested for the theft. Just because you didn't like it doesn't matter. You ate it all regardless, and now you need to pay for it. Now do I need to call the police who are literally two minutes away, or will you be in paying your bill? But it's not stealing, it's only food after all. She began to yell again and whine about it. I will never understand people who think that eating and not paying is not stealing. Just because you consume the product doesn't mean it's not stealing. If you took food from the supermarket, it is considered stealing. And this is basically the same thing. Fine, but we will never eat here again. I couldn't help but stifle a little laugh at that point. Even if she heard me, I didn't care because I already knew I wasn't getting a tip. After all, they already tried to make a run for it without giving me anything for it. So why would they bother now? My manager led them to the register and they bade leaving in a huff. I sighed and began to clear the table and noticed my manager had a little smirk on his face as she handed me the receipt. Enjoy your 20% gratuity I added to their bell. She said with a smile walking off. That definitely made my day. After all they had signed the bill because they paid with their card, so even if they contested it later, we have proof they approved it. Regardless, my manager did this so I wouldn't be stiffed from an entitled table. No one leaves our restaurant without paying. We will honestly bend over backward to make you happy, but you will be paying in the end. Next story. You gotta think twice before screwing over your only friend. This happened last week and the details may be a bit off since it was told by my dad. 
All acronyms used here refer to either the company or company owner based on a text. My dad is a network consultant and distributor. His work involves selling and maintaining wireless equipment and providing communication solutions. A few months ago, he was bidding for a multi-million dollar government project, competing against rival company and evil company. Both companies were friends as they sourced from the same manufacturer. A bit of background information. When my dad's company first started, him and the rival company were good friends as they both sourced equipment from the same manufacturer. After dad's company grew, my dad switched to a different manufacturer and slowly dad's company and the rival company started turning into rivals. However, my dad was a diplomatic guy and always maintained friendly relationships with the rival company. One of the requirements for being eligible for the project was that the company bidding needed to possess a special certificate. Not sure of the name, but it was a huge process to obtain. But a company without the certificate could lease it from another company possessing it for a short period of time. Or if two companies worked together, only one of the companies needed to be certified. Only the rival company and that company had the certificate. Since evil company was bidding via rival company, working together, they didn't require a certificate. So if evil company won, they would share the profits with rival company as they only got in through rival company certificate. So the bidding began and all the companies produced a quote. The evil company produced the lowest quotes and won. And now that company is also a consultant, which means once the bidding was finished, he would go through the winning company's quote to see if it was feasible to be implemented. And surprisingly, the winning bid was so low that even going by bare minimum, the company would actually be losing money. My dad knew about the agreement between rival company and the evil company, and he decided to have a talk with the owner of rival company. He asked him, any reason why you're losing out money on this project? What do you mean losing out? We're making a nice profit. Are you sure? You might want to take a look at your bid over here. Um, this wasn't what we agreed on. Hold on. I need to check. The rival company's owner called back a few hours later. He tells dad, I can't reach my partner. He's in a meeting. Dad tells him, you have a bigger problem to deal with right now. The bid has no mention of your company. He's taking it on as a standalone company. That's impossible. He doesn't even possess a certificate. Your company leasing out the certificate tells a different story. No way. I never authorized that. These have got to be forged documents. Now the way things work here is that if you have a dispute with the bid, you'll have to file a claim and an inquiry would be launched, which is painstakingly slow and efficient due to the number of authorities involved. If my dad can't testify to this, as discussing the winning bid is illegal. The owner of the rival company tells my dad, you have to do something about this. Dad tells him, you're in luck. His equipment is not capable of providing coverage to the entire district, and it's really outdated. I'll bring this up in the board meeting. After that, my dad attended the meeting and brought up the problems in Evil's company equipment, which made the government official reject the Evil company's bid and hold a new project bid. This gave enough time for the rival company to file a report. The report went through. That company won the contract, yay! And the evil company was banned from participating in further projects. And a few charges were filed, I guess. And the alliance between the evil company and the rival company ended. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.